factors which are taking place in this chapter are Nasrul Din, Mullah Nasrul Din, which is the legendary character, Mullah Sahir, that was the rich man, servant, and the guest. Okay, these are the main characters here. So I would like to begin with the story. The story begins with Mullah Nasrul Din, who is the legendary character who appears in many of the central folk tales. Okay, he was a wise man, and people listen to his words and his actions. Because they are very much powerful, they are very much motivational, they are very much effective for the people. He solves the life's problem with a mixture of foolishness, wit, and wisdom. His words are very much powerful in solving the day to day problem for the people. So they are regarding him as a very much important person who could solve the problems by his motivational ideas. So he uses foolishness, wit, and wisdom to solve the life's problem. So, the story explains here that one day a rich man invited Mullah to a feast at his house. One day a rich man threw a party in his house and he invited Mullah Nasruddin to his house. He asked him that, Sir, if you would grace us with your business tomorrow night, I will be thankful to you. Then Mullah agreed. Mullah Nasruddin agreed. He told that, Yes, I will come. Yes, I will come to your feast. Now, what happened? He, uh, he was getting ready for his feet. What he is doing? He wore his saviour's clothes. That means the most untidy clothes was wearing. It was chilly. That means it was very much old. The very much uh, ugly dress and it was very much old. The edges of his shirt sleeves were patched and frayed. That means the shirt sleeves were patched. They were torn off into pieces. Tattooed along the edges. They were tattooed along the edges. That means patched and frayed. There were the bones in its elbow which were patched with switches. Okay, the elbows are having holes and there were switches there. These pieces of the clothes were joined and it was tied. Now, torn from old four stacks. Then when that means he had taken that coat from sacks. That means it was he was not wearing those dresses from many years or uh, many years back. Okay. So on the feet he slipped a pair of rag sandals. That means he was totally ready with the get up of beggar. He was looking like a beggar. He was not looking like a person who is invited to a feast. He was not, um, he was not uh, ready enough uh, to go to a party where many people which are coming uh, with a good appearance. So he uh, instead he get up in a beggar uh, dress. Okay. Now what happened? At night he arrived at the rich man's door. He with that appearance went to the rich man's house and he stayed there at the door. Servant stopped. Servant stopped. Then please stop here. Who are you? Who are you, come? Who are you coming here? All of the guests are coming with a very good dress for the feast. Who is this beggar coming in the feast here? He asked him, what do you want? He, he, he thought, uh, the servant thought, that this person was a beggar and he asked him, what do you want? He answered, Mullah Nasruddin answered, your master has invited me to his house for the feast. Mullah Nasruddin explained that, yes, I have been here because your master had asked me to come here for the feast. So, pure suspicious, that means he had, the servant was so viewing or seeing to him in such a suspicious manner, in such a surprising manner. Again, what happened? He waved to the servant that this man is not 
not my guest. Again, he went back to his guest, his elegant guest, and joined them. Then what happened? Then he went back to join the elegant. That means he went to his guest whom he had invited. The servant told Mullah Nasruddin that my master doesn't know you. That means my master is not recognizing you. Who are you? You are not the guest. Mullah again tried to insist that yes, I am your guest and your, your master had invited me to this feast. The servant laughed now. The servant was now not giving at all. He was not having a trust in him. He laughed and he told him that you go from here or I will beat you with a stick. Unless and until if you are here then you will be beaten badly by me, said the servant. Now what did Mullah Nasruddin do? Mullah Nasruddin went home. Okay, he went home. He now changed himself into a swine silk garment. Now what he did? He, uh, he wore new silk garment. He came again here. Okay. But this time it was a new and cheese mullah. Okay. He put his best cap on his head. That means now he had uh, totally changed his appearance and he was wearing good silk garments. He was wearing the best cap and added a handsome high collared coat. Now he was uh, he was wearing a different attire. He was having different attire. He sprinkled rose water on his face and hands and on his beard. Now this time he was totally handsome. Okay, he again went there and knocked the door. Okay. Now when Mullah Nasruddin uh, appeared there with a very good dress, much good attire, then once again a servant stopped him. Mullah said that your master had invited me and for the feast. So this time a servant wore his head respectfully by seeing his appearance that he is in a good dress. He uh, escorted him inside and he welcomed him. Now welcome, welcome Mullah Sahib. That rich man welcomed him heartily. This rich man showed the Mullah the special seat at the feast. That means this time the Mullah Nasruddin was welcomed. No, warm, warm welcome was there for, um, uh, for the feast. Mullah Sahib and Allah said the guests that we, have, we all have been waiting for you that day. That means this time they have given him a uh, nice welcome and they told him that yes, we were waiting for you. The food arrived. You know what happened? The party begins. The food arrived. Mullah Nasruddin smiled at the biggest. He smiled at the biggest. And what did he do? The surprising thing he, do, he does. That he take he take the food and begin to pour the soup in the over his cap. Okay, he poured the soup over his cap and he sprinkled the breadcrumbs on the soldiers. Okay, he spread the breadcrumbs on the soldier. He took the cheese kebab and fed to his sleeves. Okay, he put the cheese kebab to his sleeves. Mullah explained when he arrived in right clothes. You turn me. He explained that yes, when I have been here in the party, the rank could give her appearance and you turned me up. Now I am in a fine dress. I am having a finery dress, means an expensive dress or a uh, no, uh, showy ornament. Then you are treating me very, uh, you are treating me with honor, that means you are giving me very much importance. It is the dress that you are treating me with, that means with the appearance. Which you are giving importance and is not me. Okay, I'm not. You are not taking the importance of my identity. You are taking the importance of me, my attire, my dress, my appearance. But the thing which I want to show or I want to give you is my identity. What I am. It is not the way I am coming here with the appearance in a very good dress, in expensive ornaments, showy clothes. I am not. I am not such a type of person who is given importance with the clothes. Okay? After that, what happened? Then Mullah Nasruddin explained that you have given importance to my dress and not me and not my identity, not my virtues, not my morals, not, not my 
not my personality then what happened this rich man around he hung his head in shame he gets shame he felt ashamed because really he was judging this mulla nasruddin by his dress he said forgive me mulla sahib mulla sahib please forgive me i was blind and i could not recognize you i was blind actually i was recognizing your dress i was giving importance to your showy clothes but i am not giving the importance to the person who is a wearer of this good clothes i will never ever judge anyone with the clothes and in future we didn't repeat that means since from then he tried to change himself he totally changed himself and he never ever judge any person by the clothes he always give importance to the person having good character good virtues who always who insist the right path to conduct the life okay so here the story ends but the but the moral which we get here that is the moral of the story is never try to judge anybody by his clothes and appearance never try to judge anybody by the clothes or appearance and try to give value and importance to the identity and personality that means a person with good character and good virtues okay so i hope that you are able to understand the story and you will go through the vocabularies and the hard words the moral of the story is very much clear and have a nice day thank you